from Mallorca. Mallorca. Fantasy in motion. <laughs> we need to insert this clip in the video. So we arrived to Palo de Mallorca, the capital. We have uh, four days here, right? Full of uh, interesting adventures, I hope and uh, interesting places i'm sure i don't hope yeah so we just left our uh, apartment to rent the airbnb in the center of uh, palma de mallorca and the host picked us up from the airport it was a nice uh, spaniard he was so sweet like explaining everything in detail very very nice guy we need to leave him a nice yeah, review we will link uh, yeah we should actually we link this apartment, because yeah. the place is so cute like we rented the room and the apartment is very neat clean like has everything you need and we just left it we are walking for what four minutes and we are already next to the beach i don't know is it the beach or the sea maybe there is not a beach here but i think there should be something right pretty close and we already love the place look at this oh my god the blue sky yeah it's on the horizon Calm sea. Palms. Yeah, we decided to walk uh, along the coast and see it's the place because good. it's very hard. Like at the beginning, when you arrive at a new place and you have no idea where you are, how big the place is, where to go. So you need this first day to kind of get the idea uh, about, about the place and just like yeah, realize where you are, where to go, and yeah. But it looks beautiful. So bad at making conversation I couldn't ask her for her number or her name And I don't know if she just wants me to leave her alone One of the most important sites of the capital is Santa Maria's Cathedral, also known as Palma Cathedral. This Catalan Gothic style building dates back to the 13th century, but it was completed only in the 17th. The cathedral is located just in front of the seaside promenade and offers great views of the coast. It's also located at the entrance to the old city, which resembles this gigantic labyrinth of narrow cobble streets and tiny passages. Although we arrived in Mallorca at the beginning of May, it was already quite full of tourists and we mainly heard three languages around us. It was English, German and French. Since we booked our hotel in the capital, we decided to first explore the places outside the capital. And our first pick was the northern part of the island, where we headed to by an old wooden train. The train itself is considered to be one of the most popular sites of the island. Built in 1912, it connected the capital with the picturesque town of Soler. The railway itself passes through a very beautiful landscape and on the way you will be passing local villages, several old tunnels, orange and lemon tree plantations and great mountain views. Although a single way ticket was not cheap, it was 25 euros per person, we think that the whole ride and the whole experience was absolutely worth the money. The town of Soler won our hearts from the very first minute. The first thing you notice once you reach the town is the abundance of orange and lemon trees all around. That's because the town of Soler is located in a so-called orange valley and local citrus is even exported to the mainland Spain and other European countries. We took a, an old beautiful train from Palma de Mallorca that goes to Soler. It's a smaller village on the other side of the island and it's famous for its valley of oranges. I don't know if you can see, but the tree is full of lemons and oranges all over the place. And there's a hiking trail that goes, or supposedly this hiking trail is very long. If you cover it all, it takes around seven days to walk through it, but we are just doing a section of this trail, uh, supposedly the most beautiful one. And it starts from this uh, town or village of Soler and goes to another one called Fornalux. I will write the name down below. And uh, it takes around two hours there and back. The whole trail is uh, around 6.5 kilometers and uh, offering very nice views over the valley. Walking through a real Spanish countryside. <laughs> 
Okay, so we've been walking for some time already, for half an hour maybe. But it's quite hot and guess what? We forgot to bring water. Still optimistic, still positive. Hoping to find some shops with water in the next village, but... It's a short walk, you don't have to take water, it's okay. <laughs> don't make this mistake guys, because it's hot. It's the beginning of May, but it's very hot here in the middle of Mallorca, so... There are oranges all around. <laughs> in case <laughs> we, we've been hoping to get close to some tree too, you know, still some oranges, but they're somehow all behind the fence and uh, not within the reachable distance. So unfortunately, haven't succeeded yet. We'll we're, do it. We'll do it. We're full of hope. It's a sin against God. What? Something is given. Not not to steal an orange. Given to you, and you don't take it. The thing is, it's <laughs> not. It's not given to you us. Don't steal it. It's not given you don't to steal us. It. Polish logic. Right? <laughs> the Polish roots are just screaming to take something since it's free. Okay, let's uh, stop talking because it makes us thirstier and we'll keep you updated once we reach the place with the water. On the way you'll be passing so many orange and lemon trees is just unbelievable. And generally this area is quite remote, making it a very peaceful and beautiful experience. It's probably one of my favorite memories from our trip. As soon as we enter the village of Ornalux, I already knew that this place would become one of my personal favorites. Don't know about you guys, but for me, that was a representation of a perfect European village. Tiny narrow cobble streets, beautiful old houses decorated with different flowers and plants, restaurants where locals together with tourists having a chat while enjoying their amazing meals, and all this came together just perfectly, surrounded by this beautiful, beautiful landscape. Besides, Fornalux is also surrounded by lots of hiking trails that offer different views of the village itself and the valley. Meanwhile, we got a bit hungry and it was time to try some local specialties, including local olives marinated in orange juice, so-called padron peppers and orange hummus. What are your thoughts about this beautiful village film and about this beautiful day? It's good. It's hard to, it's hard to really describe it, put it in words. It's very different from Madeira. We will, we will have like this kind of thumbnail. Like, is it the most beautiful village in the world? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> I think that the sun came out. When it's so hot in this midsummer weather, I wanna know her past and be her future. We are on our way back to Solar. We have to hike all the way back, but this time we're taking a different road, a new one, unexplored. So hopefully it will bring us to the right destination. Okay, you have me, yes. <laughs> and we have Google Maps. I trust Google Maps. No, it's actually not Google. more than you. No, sorry, it's not Google Maps. It's a uh, special maps for uh, hiking. For mountains, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so hopefully we'll get to the destination. Uh, I think that uh, me and Philip, we like trying out new roads uh, at dusk. And then we somehow always end up uh, the last ones on the trail in the middle of nowhere. And it's already dark and yeah, uh, you know, once, once the excitement. You will, once you'll know the story from Seychelles. <laughs> I won't tell the story. <laughs> hopefully we will get to the solar before it gets dark. Although looking at how fast it gets dark, I think we won't we good, we do good. that. There is no one in the street, probably because people are busy eating, that's what I'm hoping for. But the view is beautiful. Yeah. We fell in love with Fornalux and we ended up leaving much later than we planned, but the colors of the sky we saw upon leaving were so pretty that it was worth staying till that late hour. our second day in Mallorca slept well because yesterday we luckily managed to get the last bath from Sole to Palma and we were super tired in the evening so we went to sleep straight away and today is our second day on Mallorca the plan is to go and get some breakfast then we want to um, go to the car rental and rent a car we were actually thinking about the scooter as well but um, I don't know, we thought that the, the roads here are quite good, but it takes around an hour to get to some places we want to visit. And we thought that it's not the best idea, maybe. It would be tiring 
to ride under the sun and we decided this time to try riding a car which I think will be a good idea and uh, we'll have breakfast and then we'll decide today we will either go to explore the southern coast of Mallorca where they have all these beautiful beaches with blue crystal clear water or we will go to the north and there there are lots of beautiful beaches as well plus some old villages uh, to explore we don't know yet which option we would choose right but anyway it's gonna be a very exciting day and uh, looking forward to it as always I my t-shirt oh yeah Philip put on his special t-shirt from I bought it in Madrid right back to the pueblo <laughs> that's me yeah now we are approaching the old city and there is something about this mornings in this kind of place, right? There is some fresh energy <coughs> and uh, these places are not that touristy yet because we are still like 10 minutes away from the old town so it's actually pleasant because it's not overcrowded Driving on Mallorca is a very enjoyable experience. The roads are really good and very well connected and often offer great views of the sea. No wonder this place attracts lots of cyclers who come here every year from all over Europe to train. Meanwhile we reached the southern part of Mallorca, which is famous for its most beautiful beaches. The first beach we visited is called Calapi and it became my personal favorite. The watercolor here does not need any filters and the landscape looks just unreal. Besides, the water temperature also turned out to be very pleasant and suitable for swimming. So we didn't wait long before going into the water. To tell the truth, we like this place very much and we didn't really want to leave, but there are so many amazing places to see on this island that it's just impossible to stay in one place for too long. Our next destination was the so-called Estreng Beach, located inside a national park. This beach was very different from the previous one. It was much bigger and had more infrastructure, but to tell the truth we liked it less since it looked more like a regular city beach. So we didn't stay here for too long and we headed towards our next destination. visited uh, one of the most beautiful uh, beaches on Mallorca which is called the uh, beach of Morro, Cala de Morro and it's this one we were there 
Just look at the color of this water, guys. I can't get enough of this blue. And now there is such a small trail leading to another beach. Uh, and it's also supposedly one of the most picturesque ones on Mallorca. So today we're exploring the southern coast. We decided to go to the south and we rented a car, which was a very good idea because it's very comfortable and we stop wherever we want. And the roads are so good that they basically lead you straight to the beach. And there is like usually a tiny little trail uh, taking you to the beach. And uh, I know we've seen so many beautiful views today and the color of this water and the landscape is just jaw dropping. I'm literally stopping on every corner, taking pictures, videos, which is annoying for Philip. <laughs> Because he has to wait for me every time, but I just can't do anything about it because just every corner offers a different view and it just looks so beautiful that I don't know, I can't get enough of it really. I mean, just look at this. Wow. Mallorca is full of surprises pleasant surprise yesterday we had a completely different experience we did a hike we saw some old tiny picturesque villages and today we have this kind of uh, a day of exploring um, local beaches for which Mallorca is mostly famous and wow amazing island I was not sure if we would be able to swim I took only one swimsuit with me because it was showing that the temperature I was going to be around like 24 degrees um, and the water people were saying that it's like swimmable but coldish so I wasn't sure about how it's going to be but it's perfect the reality is that it's quite warm I would say not warm but it's hot during the day and because it's so sunny it really feels like getting into the water and like when you get in the water, this first couple of seconds you feel a bit coldish but then you get used to it and it's very refreshing, so very very nice and perfect weather for swimming so I think that I'm gonna get myself a second swimsuit maybe no. <laughs> and the funny thing is that today is the 4th of May so it's literally uh, like middle of spring, but this island makes you feel like it's middle of summer. We we're just talking about it today with Philip. Because in Poland the weather was okay, but we were still wearing like, some light coats and jackets. And we came here and it's like, wow, are we on summer holidays? But no, it's spring holidays. So highly recommend to come to Mallorca in May. The last beach we visited on that day was called Cala Lombards and this place is definitely on my favorites list. The beach itself is located in a very beautiful bay and to get there you'll need to walk down quite a few stairs, but it's totally worth it, because the place looks just unreal. By that time we still had two more places to see. First of them this gorgeous rocky formation coming out straight from the sea called Espontas, which is actually considered to be Mallorca's postcard. In 400 meters at your destination. While the second and the last one was one of Mallorca's probably most romantic fishing villages, Cala Figuera. Our second day on Mallorca was coming to an end and by the time we arrived in Palma it was quite late so we were super tired and we went straight to the hotel to recharge before the new day and our new adventures. Mm -hmm. 